first day, yeah, first, first week rather, of the team navigating, you know, their first return here at HSB? Yeah, it's, it's always a, a great day every year. Uh, a lot of optimism, a lot of energy, uh, and uh, it's just, again, nice to see everybody and uh, get outside too. Too much office time over the last couple months. It's, you know, we're used to being outside, and uh, again, just a, a fun day. Guys came in fit and, and excited about uh, a new year. Uh, you know, one that I, I know the expectations have now kind of changed here a little bit, and, and uh, in a lot of ways, that's what we signed up for. Uh, but kind of the uh, the goals and the standard is very similar to what we started with this year or uh, last year. You know, we want to be in the postseason. Uh, and we want to compete for trophies, but uh, we know this is a, uh, a, a very different year with different opportunities. Uh, so just, uh, again, optimism and, and looking forward to uh, getting to know some of the new guys and, and, and pushing this club uh, even further than we did last year. Coach, I know every year is different, and to piggyback off of what you just said, uh, for the fans, maybe they're thinking, Western Conference Finals again or bust? Is that sort yeah? Of no, it's no. It, it it doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, that'd be great. Uh, but there's a whole process and there's twists and turns. And to to, to get to that point last year, uh, there was a, a a lot that happened. And there's going to be a lot that happens throughout this season that we get we need to navigate. And um, each year is so different in what that looks like. So. Um, yes, we'd like to have a similar year. Uh, as we said, the, the, we understand the expectations uh, have changed. But our goals are very similar than, uh, than they were at the beginning of last year. And it's, again, put ourselves in the postseason, uh, go after every tournament uh, to, to win a trophy that we're in, whether it's CONCACAF, or Open Cup, not Open Cup, uh, Leagues Cup. And, um, and, again, be in the postseason and put ourselves in a good position uh, if we are getting into the postseason that we're playing at a high level uh, and, and we can ultimately go as far as we can go. But yeah, not a lot has changed in uh, the, the, the goal setting for us. Coach, the last time we talked, we were in L.A. Um, you've had some time now. Um, do you like the picture that was painted last year uh, on your first year here? You as an artist... Do I like the picture that's painted of the team? Just in general, your first year here in Houston, um, yeah. everything you achieved. Listen, I, I, you know, I, I don't have a lot of interest in going into last year. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I think it was a, uh, yeah, it was a successful year. And anytime you win a trophy and bring a trophy back to the to the city, uh, and um, Put our, you know, make our goals as far as getting into the postseason and pushing this club uh, off the field, I think, and putting us in a, in a better light and, and, and bringing expectations up, uh, bringing more fans and, and more awareness and more media coverage out to this club. Uh, in those kind of three buckets, yeah, I think we, we, we're, we're moving, uh, we move the club in the right direction. Yeah, and that's, again, that's not me, that's everyone, everyone involved in this, this project. So, but now we have to do it again, and it's a, it'll be a difficult task. And you know, we won't catch anybody by surprise this year. So the, the the games themselves get more difficult. Teams start to figure out what we're trying to do now, and uh, so it's very important for us to evolve. And that's everywhere: the business side, on the soccer side, and the coaching, um, to make sure we're not staying still because it's a very, very dangerous place to live in professional sports if you're going sideways. we got to push and get better, uh, or we won't have a chance to have the success that we had last year. And what must the team do now in this preseason um, to make sure you guys uh, aren't easy to crack? Well, we, you know, we really only found ourselves. Uh, uh, we, we didn't really find ourselves until maybe two-thirds into the season. Uh, where we finally found about how we're going to go about uh, the game on the field, and uh, we were very clear in, in, in kind of the game model and how we were going to play over the next few years. Uh, so that took the twists and turns and a lot of adaptations to get to that point. 
now that we're here and we understand who we are in, in a better way, uh, now it's kind of getting more granular in that and, and really getting detail and, uh, detailed within who we are to, to get us, uh, to, to move us further along on the field. And that's, a, that's an exciting kind of thing because last preseason, if you go back, we didn't know who we were. We were going to find it out. Now we know who we are. So now it's about the details, uh, building depth, and, and, and making sure uh, we're, uh, we're still growing within who we are. And then last one for me. Sorry. Uh, you have Sebas Pereira back uh, yesterday. Saw him. Uh, you were motivating him to, to push harder. Um, what was... He's back. What's, what's the connection? He's back. Connection's fine. You know, he's back and uh, he's, uh, I think, excited about being here. And uh, we're excited to have him back. So we'll, we'll, go, uh, uh, we'll go out there every day and, and evaluate him, see where he's at, see how he fits into kind of, uh, you know, us now as opposed to early in the season, right? He didn't have the luxury of playing with this group as I said, when we figured out exactly how we're going to go about things. Uh, so uh, it would be interesting to see him over the next couple weeks uh, and early into the season to see how he fits in. Pat mentioned that he's hoping that Ferreira can fill in for, you know, Corey's exit. Um, but if not, he's, he's saying, you know, you guys are looking into maybe finding another forward. Have you uh, asked him for any any signings in, in specifically? Or? Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I don't go in and say, Pat, you know, I need to. We, we, we're collective. We, we know what we need and where we want to go and, and what types of players that we want to add. Uh, and this 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 job, or you know, particularly Pat's job and, and Asher's job, uh, that's a constant. Always trying to push and get better profiles in here and more guys that can compete uh, with our crew and, and, and make us better. As I said, it goes back to the theme of like, if you stand still, you're dead. And uh, so we have to keep moving. And, and a big part of that is bringing in uh, competition or some high-end talent. And we're, yes, always looking for that. And having said that, I mean, Pat was pretty clear that, you know, if we're thinking bringing another Hector Herrera, that's really not going to happen. Um, going into this season with practically almost the same team as last year, is chemistry good enough to get you over the hump to win the championship, or, or do you need more talent? We always want uh, – now here you go with these expectations, right? Um, so you play to win, right? Yeah, yeah of, of course we do. And, and my, my response is we want to get better. And uh, we need to push on that end as much as possible to make sure that we have – real competition out there and uh, we're uh, adding the highest level player possible for the Houston Dynamo. The team we have right now and the players here, right, this is not it. Okay, just because we don't have, you know, some additions on, on day, you know, uh, day two of, of preseason doesn't mean this is what it looks like this year. And we talk about how long a season is and the twists and turns and the transfer window now and the transfer window in the summer. So th there's, there's plans and, um, you know, we all want everything right now, uh, but uh, sometimes it, uh, um, it, it takes a little bit of time to really uh, get the right players in that make sense for us on the field, culturally. Uh, but putting that aside, it's a good group. And you saw that last year. And there's kind of the, the players themselves, but also the, the, the system and the game model. As I talked about, it took us a while to figure it out. And now it's about fine-tuning that and making that even more specific and more detailed for the players so we can have more success. Uh, and then sprinkling in some, some new players that we have already. Uh, and they've got some good youngsters coming on. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, we've got some, some injured guys coming back that will add to the group. So it's not completely the same group. Uh, there, there'll be some new uh, uh, some guys that need to step up. Corey's a big miss, you know, teenage. Not a lot of fun to watch those guys that go out the door. This is professional sports. Um, and, uh, again, Corey did a great job. But we, we think we have some other guys that can fill in for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, Kieran's a guy because he's one of our own. We've we've known him for a while, so we know his qualities. So this isn't a real surprise of kind of what he gives us here because he's been here for the summers and he's trained with us last year. 
Um, uh, yes, uh, yeah, and I was in D.C. and I'd watch him at Georgetown all the time. So uh, he, uh, we're very, very familiar with him. Uh, great lungs. You run forever, up and down, left-footed, uh, kind of a, a wing back or, or, or a left back in, in kind of our model. Uh, but uh, you know, technically very sound and clean and, and, again, makes his mind up when he does things uh, in, in a clear way. I, young, hungry, he, he's going to be great. He's going to be great. And it, it's always nice signing homegrowns. I, I love it. You know, D.C. was one of the highlights of it is watching these guys come in and then it's up to us and it's up to them to now grow into uh, a spot where they can be on the field and I, I think he's uh, he's one that you know is it this year we'll see I'm always open to it uh, but you know uh, some of these guys it takes a year and you don't know know when and Brooklyn looks really good so far you know talking about another homegrown you know really good training today and he put on some weight he's um, looking uh, looking stronger than I've seen him in a while so yeah, and you, that's part of the fun of these seasons is you don't know on day one who's going to be uh, a pivotal piece in, um, in the season. But I know I have an open mind about uh, whether it's a Sebas Ferreira coming back or it's a Kieran Sargent or a Brooklyn. Uh, you know, it, it will, that's what uh, the beauty of this. We'll, we'll find out on the field. And we have a, a long preseason, a lot of games going down to Mexico in, in a few weeks to test, uh, test ourselves again against the Mexican competition. And uh, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out guy, which guys are ready, and then we'll, we'll put those guys on the field and, uh, and adapt. New assistant coach, Juan Guerrero. Yeah, Juan. Uh, what did you know about him coming in to this Not a lot. To bring in Not a lot. Uh, he came on our radar late in this process. Uh, and um, that's why you go through the interview process. And, uh, you know, he came across my desk from some – some people that said he was a really interesting guy and uh, maybe sees the game similar, uh, sees the game in a similar way than, than we do here and, and how we play. Um, and uh, in the interview process, uh, it was very, very clear that he was the right guy for this job. Uh, had, a, had a few with him and, and a, a bunch of chats after our, our initial interview, and it just, again, he just seemed like he had the right energy. and. You know, he sees the game in the way that I see it and uh, how I want this team to look like. And uh, uh, hopefully he can add to that. Again, when we talk about knowing who we are and now pouring a little gasoline on it and get more detailed and, and get more granular, and, and uh, that's where he's going to help us. Uh, he's been playing in uh, a very similar style for a while, so he's going to have new exercises, new ideas to make sure that he's, he's pushing us in the coaching office uh, to, to give us, again, those, those new ideas and in the theme of, you know, go sideways, it's not going to happen. We need, we need to, and sometimes you get better on the field and with, with players or profiles of moving us up, and sometimes you, you need to bring in somebody that will, will poke us and make us sure that our staff is better and we're moving in the right direction. Was Brendan Burke's exit planned? It wasn't planned. I mean, down the stretch it was planned. Uh, he had an opportunity to get back to where he's from uh, and, a, and a great deal with a good club. And uh, it was something I think him and his family really wanted to take. Uh, it was left on good terms. It wasn't, this was not, I didn't push him out the door. And, you know, I, I don't think he, I think he had a great time here and, and, and loved the staff and everything we did. This was just an opportunity uh, that, that he just couldn't pass up going back home, a really good deal. Uh, uh, so he's, uh, we're, 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 we're happy with, you know, his, uh, the, his uh, happy with the decision. We would love to have him, but we're, we're happy for his family that they, they are, are doing that, and he did a great job here. Uh, and uh, he was, but, and Juan's different, so we'll, we'll, that's always uh, healthy too. Last one, Coach, yep. uh, if you don't mind. Personally, how do you feel in your second year in Houston? Are you getting comfortable? Are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, as far as you know, my fam. The difference again with this preseason and last is uh, my three children and my wife are here, and they've got a, um, a half a half a year in, in the school district, and my wife is figuring out the lay of the land. So we're we're much more settled, uh, you know, from a, from a personal standpoint of knowing uh, knowing the uh, knowing the city a little bit more, and uh, I look forward to this year finding more about the city 
and, and, and kind of getting involved in the city a little bit more. Last year was very difficult because it was uh, just, there was so much to do and, and so much focus on getting this team to where it needed to be. But um, I've told myself to make sure this year I find some ways to uh, kind of look at the city in a different way and, and kind of uh, look for some organizations or things to get involved in. And, uh, but that's uh, it's kind of, still want to work as much as possible here, but yeah, get to know the city a little bit more. Coach, you mentioned evolving, yeah. and I listened to what you said. I think it's a great message for leaders in general. If you stand still, I think you're in trouble. Yeah. And relative, you know, you talk, we talk about words like goals yeah. and expectations. How do you keep calm with those expectations that you may bring on yourself, it may come from leadership, it may come from the fans. Yeah. Help us mentalize that because it can be stressful, I, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, look, we all live it. We all live with expectations of ourselves and uh, we all have job stresses. Every, everybody here, here has the same thing. So, um, you know, personally, I've, I've done this long enough. I've lived with kind of the head coaching world long enough that I, I've got my... Um, I've got my methods to stay even keel, you know, whether it's family, whether it's exercise, uh, whether it's sneaking off to an art museum, you know, I, I find my ways to recharge uh, throughout this, these years. And, uh, you know, you never perfect it. You can't perfect it in, in a job like this. It's uh, the, the, the ups and downs and the management level on, the, on, a, on a human. It's very, very hard to uh, kind of uh, always stay even keel and, and not go have the ups and downs. But, it's also what I kind of love about it, and uh, the twists and turns and the turmoil of it. Uh, I, I also embrace that, and uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to this year. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks man. Guys.